Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, I hope you had a great break, uh, lunch break, lunch break. Um, so now we are on to the second part of Expo Contributor Summit. And to start us off, we have Om Pragash with updates on the steering committee. Om Pragash, go ahead. Yep, thanks, Carol. Hi, everyone. Hello. I know it's after lunch, Mancha. Um, I hope I don't make you guys fall asleep. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, for this talk, I didn't prepare any slides as such, but um, I'm going to share updates about two things. One is about steering committee, and uh, the other one is about the new learning uh, platform that we'll be using uh, instead of Katakoda. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it's been over three months since we introduced the steering committee that is in the last contributor summit. And we had over 11 meetings so far. And how do you guys feel? Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, we, we also, you know, uh, recently published a blog post on Ansible steering committee, and it's available on the Ansible website. Do check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And um, I'll also paste the link on chat. So yeah, I said that we are working with the community in a, a community way to discuss um, proposals, ideas, and make decisions through the voting process in an open way. Um, we, are all, we are also collaborating with uh, the community users as much as possible to address the project needs, to find maintenance for Ansible modules or collections and uh, also to ease the contributor maintainer experience by having docs in place. And thanks to Andrea and other community members for that. Um, for now, um, we are still focusing on collection, but we'll be extending the responsibilities to other projects within the Ansible community as required. And um, we also created a new community topics GitHub repository um, to track and categorize each topic separately. And you, you guys can use the repository to create an issue as topics, um, to discuss ideas, um, suggestions, new policies, proposals, or even uh, collection inclusion request. And then uh, those topics will be discussed in the weekly IRC meeting. The other important thing that we think will be resolved with the community topics repository is for the users uh, from different time zones who couldn't able to join the weekly IRC meeting that happens at 18 UTC. Um, can can share their uh, viewpoint on other proposals or, um, I mean, discuss their own proposals asynchronously. And then the community members will uh, discuss the same in the meeting and then post an update back to the ticket so that, in a way, the asynchronous discussion uh, keeps going on. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about uh, steering committee. And uh, we would love some feedback for uh, the steering committee and uh, or, or even suggestions if you guys have. So do ping us uh, in Ansible Community IRC channel or on um, uh, a discussion. Um, we can use it as well on a community topics repository. So now um, a bit about the new learning platform, which will be replacing Katakoda in the coming days. Um, how many of you guys know that uh, we have a training scenario in Katakoda platform? Yeah. So right now we have only one course in Katakoda. And um, yeah, for now we use that um, to help uh, newbie contributors and maintainers with the development process. But now we are going to move to a new platform called Instruct. Don't ask me why we are you know, moving to a new platform. But again, uh, the goal is to help uh, newbie contributors or maintainers or even community users to adopt the product. Um, I'll place the link in chat. So this is the repository that we are uh, using for instruct scenarios. You guys got it. So like I said, um, currently we only have one course on Katakoda. That is uh, testing collections uh, locally using Ansible test. That to instruct. And uh, create a new course called uh, creating your own collection. So. We are, we are planning to add more scenarios in the future, and we'll also need your help um, you know, uh, to add more scenarios. And um, you guys can post your ideas on the GitHub discussion. 
that I will share on chat. Yeah. One one uh, scenario that's in pipeline is um, the use case we're talking about. Like say, check out a PR and test it locally. So we are also planning um, to add a scenario um, for that on the new platform. And uh, likewise, we'll be adding more. But uh, we also think you know we need suggestions or feedback from you guys on what kind of uh, scenarios we can have on those platforms. Um, yeah, so as soon as we are ready to go live, we'll announce the same through Twitter, Bullon, et cetera. Um, so these are the two updates that I wanted to uh, share. But um, I, I, I thought you know we can interact more about the feedback or suggestions about committee or even um, the scenario ideas about, um, I mean, to add in the new platform and stuff. So do you guys have any? Yep, we hear you. No, I mean, uh, scenario ideas. Um, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just just letting you know that we're still listening to you. <laughs> so when we we talked about this, I think it was actually last year. Uh, I forget when Ansible Fest was September October, I think last year. And at that point, we were using the Catacoda platform. And for those of you attending, you may remember we did a two day event. So the first day was a bit sort of high level introduction, and we demoed the Catacoda platform uh, i'll get a link to the feedback in a minute it was amazingly positive which is great right it's always nice to have positive feedback but it all i think to me it cemented in my mind that this is the right way forward especially for for people that are joined uh, starting their uh you know, their, their journey into contributing to ansible um i can't remember who it was when we were doing the jamboard they came up with a nice term of like the entry point for collection maintainers well, this is another step along that journey that people could take. So I know a lot of you have sort of got over that initial hump or vertical learning wall. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying to understand how everything was uh, put together. But I know some of you are a bit new and probably are struggling with some things and you know challenges between finding documentation and trying to work stuff through. So this is quite a nice way of um, being able to do that. Um, I'd like for us to end up with maybe like a dozen or so different um, labs. So yeah, well, what would people like to see? Or, or what are the use cases that they, we think maintainers or first-time contributors need to uh, need to know about? Are there things around how to build docs or different types of issues to fix or how to port something from one place to another? And for those of you that help on IRC, what are the types of questions that you get asked that maybe we could automate uh, away in terms of uh, learning scenarios. So yeah, um, so those are the two updates again. And um, like Nando said, if you have uh, any use case ideas that you guys think you know um, that will help maintainers or contributors and that we can add on the Instruct platform, um, we can discuss about that right now, or you can also um, share it on the discussion uh, GitHub link that I posted on the chat. Yeah, I've just put the link to the Katakoda one in there from Series October last year. Um, so just going through some of the feedback there was step-by-step -step building tasks into roles, um, which I guess now we're saying that like collections are the, the primary way. Maybe we should have something to help people port um there are standalone roles i can see greg has floating pace around uh, and so i guess um yeah how to convert a, a standalone role into a collection you know we could maybe create a um uh just like a, a thick standalone role that people check out and then work through like we've got the branch with the mice club again so i think I wonder if that could be something good Um, Soren, I think you and I have talked a bit about Molecule before. Maybe I think this because I mean there's a little bit of a learning curve with all tools and Molecule included. So I maybe... think yeah, both of them would be great uh, for this. Now the big question is um, 
if we are sure we are going to stay with this platform because it requires a lot of investment uh, uh, to build these tutorials. And if we change again, probably I will not have a big incentive of spending a lot of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get clarity by the end of the month on that. Oh, OK, OK. Not that I would have time to do anything in no, 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 no. months, but... <laughs> and, and, and to be clear, I'm not expecting you to do I'm just sort of trying to throw out suggestions. Um, basically just looking through the people we had last time. Uh, one thing that we've been talking about in IRC recently is a standalone um, inventory scripts and uh, uh, vault scripts. Is there anything you we could do there to help people migrate? Is that something that could go into a classic Oda scenario or was it too involved? And, or, or maybe we actually have one on how to write an inventory plugin. Maybe that's a, an easier thing and people can learn that way. That's, that's not something I've ever done. You mean the one that we discussed on last uh, community meeting? Like yeah, we, we span the inventory and vault scripts out into a dedicated repo. Um, I know inventory scripts are easy to write, um, so a lot of things that just they just work. But I wonder if there's something we can do to help to help there, maybe. And maybe having a yeah, scenario for creating an inventory plugin would be nice. I mean, having scenarios for other plugins or modules would also be nice. But that might be in particular nice because a lot of people are probably still liking of writing inventory scripts, even though inventory plugins are a lot better usually. Not just for error handling, just also for option handling and so on. But I think for the migration you just mentioned, I, I guess there a scenario won't really help because that's usually you just have to adjust the URL you are using and that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe writing different types of plugins, I think, could be a, a good thing to put in. If you want to create new content, then having scenarios is, I think, a really good idea. Also, just like for writing simple plugins or simple lookup or a simple module or something like that, I guess there you cannot have enough examples there. I mean, we have docs on that already. Do we need to simplify them? Are they... Uh... I don't know. What, what's wrong with the current docs? They're supposed to explain how to write the, the plugins right now. That's true, but they are not like interactive video, yeah. <laughs> step by step. I mean, some some people. I mean, for me, docs are perfectly fine, but some other people really like, well, videos or some something which looks more like a step by step thing, which helps you presents your code. And you, if you click on next step or something like that, and for them having some, some things like that would be great. Actually, we have a couple of presentations doing that. There's a, a, a couple of mine on doing callback plugins. Uh, Jimmy did one on modules for uh, Ansible Fest. Putting those out as separate videos, you think, is what we need to do to uh, encourage people more? Yeah, the, the feedback is that different people learn in different ways and. Reference documentation has to exist, right? We we need that. We need to have the canonical source information. So it's interesting if you look through the issue, also oh, discussion one one nine that I posted just before. People really benefit from having a sort of safe environment to go and experiment and play around with this stuff in a guided way. Um, it's yeah, people learn in different ways, so we sh we should be mindful of that and come up with different ways that people can learn. Yeah, and also, I know Simon has maybe been slightly facetious saying nobody reads docs, but there is unfortunately a little bit of truth to that. Um, yeah, there, there's only one thing about creating video content. It falls out of date pretty fast, and it's a lot more expensive to update than the doc site. Yeah, so, and, and that's one real benefit that I found with the instructing Katakoda is it's all version you can do stuff. It is in between, right? It's like it's not a static video, but it's also interactive enough to be more interesting than the docs. So probably it's like 
I would I would avoid the same thing. Is like why to spend a lot of time building a YouTube video half an hour an hour that gets outdated quickly. It's very easy to update a tutorial, right? And also people are much can easily skip some steps, right, in the tutorial if they already know and go to the ones that are more interesting, which is much harder in videos. But this is only my view. I'm not in the YouTube generation. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so you can create a list of uh, wants for those and uh, just start just making them when we have time and linking them to the same topics in the doc site. Here's the, the docs and here's the interactive way to do it. Is that more or less what you're thinking? That, that's one way. One, one thing, so just to give a bit of background, because you know I talked a little bit about Katakoda and Instruct, that they're very similar from a, a user point of view. One of the really nice features in Catacoda to pick up what Brian said about things being coming getting out of date is we can actually CI test instruct. So we can run instruct and put soul scripts in for every step. So if the first step is install Ansible, we say the soul script for that is pip3 install Ansible. And then we have write a validation script to check that the Ansible program is there. So we in CI once or night, once a week, whatever. And we'll be sure that even if the way Ansible changes or there's a different message output it, or if a repo goes away that we depend on, or Ansible test has been updated to test a new thing, that we'll know before someone three months later just happens to run through the scenario and go, this is failing in a weird way, I don't like it. And I've seen that happen already. So I, I am. that's one of the reasons I'm happy for us to spend more time on it is because we will not have those issues. Or should reduce, I should say. Uh, yeah, and as Greg says, it's very difficult to copy and paste from videos. Um. It's the best I've seen done is when you have both, right? It's a lot of work. Like you have the video and you have the transcript underneath so people can follow along and cut and paste the commands you're using, or you use annotations that can be highlighted, but that depends on the video platform. Um, it's it's not an easy problem to solve because, yeah, people want different things out of, out of how you present information. It's not easy. You either have to accept an awful lot of work or make some hard choices. So yeah, um, I mean, we can add um, scenarios on how to develop plugins or modules and uh, any other suggestions apart from this. I think over to you, Carol. So thank you all. Thanks, Gando, for joining us. Thank you, Ambragash. Um, next topic is community docs. And I think, Gundalo, uh, are you leaving this? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we'll have a bit more of an uh, interactive discussion. Um, this might not be the, might not need that one on it. Um, docs. So I just said before that no one reads docs, but docs is still very, very important. Uh, and we're trying to have a thing. This is mainly being led by um, Andrew Hansen, the below seven, um, on how we can improve the docs specifically around new collections and the sort of meta things. So um, how to release collections, maintainers checklists, different things like that. So let me put some links in the chat. So um, it is possible but maybe not uh, but not yet confirmed that we may create a new uh, area for the community documentation uh, this could be something like ansible, uh, docs .com community or maybe somewhere else um, at the moment a lot of the community docs are under the ansible ansible uh, repository because historically that's where most things happened um, so with the move to collections and thinking about other things like meetups and YouTube and the Catacoda and the stuff that we've just been talking about and all the video tutorials, we want to sort of expand the, the concept, uh, the area of this a little bit more. Um, this is going to be a big project. You know, this is going to be you know, years in the making, but we'll sort of define the structure and then uh, start putting bits in. Um, However, uh, we want to be really mindful that we don't break the current user 
Well, contribute to experience, right? People know roughly where the docs are. And uh, in the Ansible Ansible, or rather docs.ansible.com slash Ansible. Um, our Google search ratings for those pages are pretty good. So, you know, whatever we do, we'll put redirects in. Um, but also, we want to have people to have a nice experience on the run, one part of the doc stream navigating to another. So, what we've been doing, or rather, what um, uh, Andrew and uh, some of the folks have been doing is building up this new sort of community doc. So, this is brand new stuff that we couldn't have documented. Um, anywhere else. For example, we've got this quite nice guide, and I think this was talked a bit about earlier. We talked about having an entry point for how to do some bits. So we've got this preparing your environment, uh, creating a repo, also checking out a repo, or any answer. Well, so this is a lot of this stuff is aimed at both first time contributors but also maintainers. Um, so we're looking for feedback on these different bits. Um, you know, these are some things as well, to go back to what Amprakash was talking about, that we might also put into uh, the Instruct learning platform. Um, but we hope that these be fairly uh, self-explanatory docs. Um, we know with the move to collection repos, I think, you know, we said there's 91 different collections now that docs end up being fragmented. So the thought is that this will be the mechanical, the main source of information and then individual readmes and markdown.mds and those repositories will just link back to here so we don't have to maintain the links for everything. So that's sort of what we're, we're thinking at the moment. So there's various different bits in here. Um, I've just put the link in the chat so you can have a look. I've got bits about how to maintain, um, you know, what is a maintainer, how to get informed things, uh, how to get involved, what's expected. Um, so we'd really appreciate feedback, uh, just get a repo so you can just raise issues or raise pull requests if you think uh, there's different bits you want to raise. Is Andrew back? I know he had to pop out a bit before. Uh, Andrew, is there anything you'd like to add or specific questions that you want to throw to the community at this point? Um, you know, uh, I'd like to say, first of all, uh, thank you guys who helped to create this. Uh, to Felix, uh, I mean, Vakil, uh, our community, uh, our, our documentation team. Uh, thank you all. Um, and the question, uh, the most important question uh, now is uh, where, where uh, it, it will live. So uh, should we embed this to our current website or uh, to the new one? This is the most important to decide. So I guess what my, thank you for that. I guess my starting question to the, the audience here is, do you understand what I'm saying when I say like, do we want to, have this in one repo or sorry, one doc site or split against another? How do people currently move around and, and find things? So let me give you an example of what I mean. Ah, we uh we can't pass it, are we? But docs, yeah. Ah. It worked for me. There you go. No, just, just my inability to type when people are watching. Um, cool. So we have at the moment sort of the index bar down the, the left hand side, and we have a section for contributing to Ansible. Um, and then we've got the expand that. Uh, we've got these different bits in here. Um, so some of this is relevant to the Ansible. Well, it's now known as Ansible Core. Some of this is related to anything in the Ansible, the whole Ansible ecosystem. Um, some of it is about, and there's not a huge about, there's some bits, but not a huge amount about collections because we're still sort of uh, playing a bit of catch up around the documentation side there. So our, our thoughts are do we want to keep on putting more bits of documentation in here? 
or do we want to pull out some of these things into their own dedicated place or what are the sort of workflows and personas people might go through um, also did i realize that this might not be the best surgeons because a lot of you have been through that learning curve of of finding things in the docs so don maybe you can also show them um, the new uh URL docs.community and school.com slash community. Um, so is that docs.ansible or ansible.com slash community? No, docs.ansible.com slash community. Yeah, so so this so that does that isn't live yet, but this is the repository that that would potentially drive that that hosts those those uh, new files. Gundula, this is Sandra. Did you want me to describe some of the um, some of the worries I had, so to speak? Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, so I didn't know she joined. Yeah, that'd yeah, be great. Thank yeah. you. Um, okay, so when when thinking about sp splitting the doc site, this is kind of a little bit what we went through when we tried to figure out how to get Ansible package from Ansible core, um, and one of the worries was if you're on one doc site and you need something that's on the other doc site, you either actually have to know it's there, or you click a link, handy link somewhere, and now you're popped into a different doc site. That doesn't include the same information. So whereas today, you go to docs.ansible.com slash Ansible, and you've got community stuff, how to do PR stuff, how to write code, how to use it, it's all there together. When we pull stuff out, then the search, for example, within the site, doesn't find it because we don't have a full site search. We don't have a doc search. So if you search for, if we move this out and you're searching in the existing Ansible docs, you see a problem and say, all right, how do I open a PR? That search won't work anymore. Not that it's the best search in the world. That's a different problem, but that particular search won't work because the information is now on a different page. Um, and I just kind of wanted people to think about that idea of all right, you're you're splitting the information base and the the, the search and the, the jumping between it makes it a little bit harder. Um, it may still be worthwhile because as as I think Gundel mentioned, most of this stuff isn't tied to Ansible Ansible anymore. Some of it still is and has to remain. A lot of it is more collection focused or community based, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same repo. So we lost Gundalo. Um, yeah, so I see in chat um, the idea of keeping it in the same so we can make sure the search works. The one thing I don't know is, is there a way to do a full site search on docs.ansible.com that will hit everything so that the search would be you know, up in that top black bar if we could get it to work. I just don't know how that, how that happens with our current search engine. I think we could embed Google and limit it to docs to docsdansible.com. Um, I'm not sure about the uh, search engine at the moment. Yeah. So I think that might. I mean, if I guess the question for others is, if we had, you know, a magical site search that went across all docs.ansible.com, would that alleviate any worries about um, splitting docs into separate sites so that all the community stuff or contributor stuff is in one site and the user stuff is in another and i'm not sure where developer stuff goes i think in the new site um, for me it would not be a problem i think yeah i guess my own my own feedback would be you know do it hand in hand as we split and decide to move stuff over, get a site search in place at the same time if possible. Even if it isn't the perfect site search, at least there's something. A bit of a problem with a site search might be that you will that it will search in all different Ansible versions published. So you might end up, you are on the latest version, you search for something and you're suddenly on the 2.9 docs, which might not be so great or the other yeah. way around. Yeah. As we go I know forward, the... it gets worse because now you have several core versions versus several package versions and they diverge. So you on four, which uses 211, but 212 and 213 are out. Yeah, it will quickly get pretty complex. Or even 
more complex than it is already right now because not, right now Google already sends people to random versions or not random, but sometimes people end up on older versions and then they without realizing or newer versions without realizing and it probably yeah, would be a bit worse. The way we try to optimize the Google search is to have everything go to latest, which as you say is a problem if you're not on latest. If you're on 2.9, you don't have a search in Google that'll get you to 2.9. You have to go to latest and go back. Hmm. I mean, one way might be to um, use robots.txt to disable or to disallow <laughs> search engines to actually index older versions and just to, to allow them to index latest. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a hack, <laughs> but it will make sure that it, it will not give you any links anywhere else. I think if we went down the way of embedding uh, a whole site search, uh, be it Google or something else, then you can have a set of checkboxes to say what are the things you want to search against, and then it will feed those into the, the search. And we can set some default or you now have it. I'm using Ansible default package, so it's like Ansible for collection docs and the appropriate version of uh, Ansible core. Yeah, the um, the search that we have there now does have the ability to do. I don't know about site search, but does have the ability to go by version and everything else. The Tower Docs use that, so I think if you went to docs.ansible.com and poked around the search on Tower, you'll see it pops up with facets where you can click. Okay, I want Tower version. I don't know any Tower versions, but Tower version three four or four zero or whatever they're on, and then it filters the search down to that. But they could be better ones, especially if we're moving to a site search. I don't know anything about the the cost benefits of what we've got. Yeah, so maybe maybe we should take the, the site search into the um, docs working group and put that on the agenda maybe for the next Tuesday. Well, whenever there's the space to talk about that. Because that, you know, we could maybe look at getting that in place even before we do because even if we don't move any docs around, I think there's still maybe a, a challenge there that people end up searching for the for the wrong thing. Yeah, sounds good. Um, to Greg's point, yeah, they we expect people to Google, um, and that's kind of where we we try to optimize. You know, as Google, I mean, Google will always work better than any kind of site search we have, but we do still want to give people the ability because we do have. I want to say 30,000 searches every week that's using the embedded one. It's something big. It's like, wow, there's a lot I of people using that I was just replying to Soren. I was just replying to Soren's uh, so tongue in cheek <laughs> comment about expecting people to read the offline docs. That's all. <laughs> so that's all. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I get it. It's uh, people won't stop. Um, and yeah, I've said everything in chat. Okay. Thanks. Is anyone particularly interested in this um, moving around of docs or writing a community docs and would be interested in joining the, the working group? And we can have some offline discussions about this. Please, please passion is docs, apart from the doc team, obviously. No, I'll have, have a think about that and reach out to me and um, we can uh, bring some, some stuff some more. Um, quickly, just um, so I can get a, a, an understanding. Um, whilst my interest is not strictly docs, I am interested in how we classify different types of user for the docs. I've seen a spreadsheet that uh, that we had earlier about different like user roles and a sort of matrix of, of how we assign what sort of the, the audience of a document is. I am interested in a simpler version of that to look at the, so to allow the community to idea to, to identify where they sit on like a contribution um, system, like, uh, and I want to nail that down so I can use it in places like surveys. Is that working group a good place to join in and like have that kind of conversation? Would you say? Um, um, my nickel on. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. Go ahead. I was going to say my nickel on personas is that the if you're talking like the docs working group on IRC, I think that the conversation itself on who does what might be a bit better on community because I think there's more users on community versus writers. 
on docs. I mean, we've got a handful of people that help sure. out and they're great, but I think that the audience is a bit wider on community. Yeah. Well, they self-define their personas. I think, I think we've got some lightning talk time later on in the afternoon. Maybe I'll bring it up then. Cool. Thanks, Sir Juan. Allow it to town wires. Um, three minutes left for oh. this um, session or topic. Cool. Um, yeah. If there's no uh, further questions, yeah, we can move on and uh, maybe you can start the next break a little bit early as well. Um, so next one is actually me, I think. Uh, since it's like super early for Jill, so I told them I would do an update on diversity and inclusion on their behalf. Uh, let me share my screen. I don't have a presentation, I just have a bunch of links, so I'll share that as well. Share screen, oops. Okay, I've already pre-added the links to the um, HackMD. So you can follow along and I also try to remember drop, to drop them in the um, chat as we go. So for those of you who may not know, we do have a diversity and inclusion working group. And um, so this is the uh, working group wiki. And that's the link. So, um, the working group meets once every two weeks on Thursdays uh, on IRC at 1900 UTC. And uh, we are on Ansible-Diversity channel on Libera chat now. We, of course, used to be on Freenode, but now uh, we have moved to Libera chat. So if you follow, let's see, this GitHub issue, and this is the issue, and this is the link. Um, that's where we have our proposed agenda for uh, topics for the uh, meeting every other week and um, sh share the meeting minutes and uh, decisions at the end of every meeting. Uh, we'll link to the minute meeting minutes here in case if you are interested, but you can't make the meeting during the time, you can always follow this, subscribe to this issue and find out what has been discussed. So we have discussed things like, um, since all collections must have a code of conduct, so um, if things need to be reviewed, uh, we do that with this group. And um, anything that relates to diversity, for example, um, uh, earlier this year we did the inclusive language changes. Um, that's also part of things we discuss here. Yeah. And with that, that's also the project board, which is this one. Another link. All right. So here are the stuff that we're working on. So um, you can see there's this meetup organizer Code of Conduct survey, um, which we plan to send out soon. So if you are one of uh, the organizers for meetups in the community, uh, you'll be hearing from me quite soon for um, for the survey. And thanks to, of course, help from Greg and Jill and everyone to that um, help to, 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 to build the survey up. And uh, some stuff we haven't really started yet, but we're thinking of working on translations to be more accessible to a lot of people whose English uh, English may not be their first language. And also there's this um, planning, we're planning a hackfest type for uh, inclusive language. So you can see here, um, it's kind of the idea to do like a hack, hack day, hackfest type thing on RC and um, look for certain things to that we can change in the uh, language to make it more inclusive. If, if you're interested about what, what we have already done, um, this is a news article, sorry, the blog post on the inclusive language. 
So, um, and then over this weekend on Saturday, a few of us attended the uh, Code of Conduct Incidents Response Workshop. So, which means that, you know, if somebody re reports a Code of Conduct violation during an event, whether it's physical, virtual, online, um, or, or not, not necessarily at an event, but just in general, somebody um, reports an incident, um, we have now a little bit better uh, understanding and capabilities of how to manage them and respond to that, um, taking care of the community in mind. Uh, I, I myself learned a lot because um, I am not particularly good with like uh, confrontations and, and uh, you know, um, things like that in general. So the, the workshop really gave us a lot of tools. How do, how should, what should we say and how should we uh, approach that so that uh, we can reassure the person that it will be taken seriously. But in, at the same time, it's not like we're promising them what, what is the outcome because we need to talk to the re reported person and, you know, make sure that we get, um, the whole story and uh, be able to get, uh, get to the right responses, uh, appropriate responses to um, incidents that may happen. So if you don't know, we do have a code of conduct. If you probably most of you know it, but here is our Ansible community code of conduct. Um, Tong, I'm not sure I understand. Does that also mean the pronouns will be they and them? I mean the sing singular. Uh, yeah, how do I explain that? Normally, say the, uh, he or he or she or mm -hmm. he, him or her, but yeah. this is the uh, non-typed they and them. Um, that's if, what that's what I mean. The person um, prefers to be addressed that way. Then we should address them. With such yeah, pronouns, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if if it's uh, you know if it means um, matters to you, uh, you can always say you know I, I prefer to be addressed as he, she, or whatever. Like um, yeah. I can I I don't mind being addressed as she or they. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, something uh, maybe more um, in. Uh, interesting and hopefully interactive uh let's see we are uh, this is actually um pride month in the us i believe it's probably not international but still a lot of um, our colleagues are in the us and we celebrate uh we want to celebrate pride month uh, in general so we have let me stop sharing this and share another so we are coming up with some goodies. Um, we have a, a very nicely designed uh, Pride logo, which we would like to put on T-shirts. Uh, and uh, I'm discussing with the vendors right now to, to get them printed. Uh, and the last decision is which color T-shirt. And now I'll start a poll. So if you can see, um, let me zoom in a bit. So, so the, the, the logo looks like this. And the choices for colors currently are light gray, dark gray, or purple. Purple because this one of my <laughs> personal favorite colors. <laughs> but anyway, I hope um, I have started a poll in Google, Google Meet. So please vote. And uh, so here are the kind of fitted t-shirt or ladies fit. And uh, this is more of a, just, just a t-shirt look if you want to have a closer look. It's kind of a heathered uh, t-shirt. So it's a bit like, um, how do you describe it? It's this, this kind of uh, not just solid color but a bit haggard for the grays well i think the purple is just solid purple and um so as you know usually after the contributor summit we will uh, greg will send out a, a survey uh and um usually if you answer the survey and uh, include your email address we, we will send you something for 
So thank you for your participation. And since some people have already received um, the hoodie for the first contributor summit, uh, you will have a choice to receive the, this pride t-shirt. That, that, that would be basically a choice for you to, to choose which one you would like to receive. So, so this will be part of the kind of appreciation uh, gift for this contributor summit and of course to celebrate Pride Month. And I think that's all I have for my presentation. I will stop sharing. Uh, if is there any questions? If not, we'll take a short break. I believe that this break is ten minutes. But uh, but uh, before we do that, Gondolo, do we have someone for the gal community galaxy and com uh, galaxy ng, which is supposed to happen after this break? Uh. Oh, I could probably talk about it for five minutes. Um, so do we want to have a longer break or uh, at least... Okay, show? we can go for a 20 minute break, then yeah. come yeah, back at 10 past. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, welcome back. <laughs> um, so the next uh, topic well, we're going to discuss on is the Galaxy, Community Galaxy and Galaxy NG. And I think Dunlo and Greg, you can take it away. Thank you very much, Carol. Hope everyone's had a chance to recharge the tea and coffee. Just put some links in chat. Um, so I, I mentioned this very briefly at the beginning of uh, today's session, but I know a um, different set of people available now. Um, we're updating the, what, so, so we have, a, there's two things today that we have. So just to set some terminology, we have Community Galaxy. So that's the code base that runs uh, galaxy.ansible.com. Uh, so if you've been using Ansible for a while, that's probably where you go to get all your NGINX roles or your Gurning Guy roles or put your own bits and pieces. That's also where the collections are currently hosted today. Also, we have a thing called Galaxy NG, where NG means next generation. Uh, that's the, has, um, is the code for uh, Automation Hub, which is part of the paid offering for Ansible. Um, there's two that, two parts of the code base that made that up. There's the front end and the back end, and uh, that's based on pulp. This has generally worked all right, but if you've noticed, you may have noticed that um, community galaxy, galaxy.ansible.com hasn't really changed much in the past few years. The reason for that is that the Galaxy team has been working pretty much flat out on Galaxy NG. Got all the support in for that that's, that's needed. The proposal, and I, you know, this is this is going to happen. I'm not seeing anything that says um, it won't. Is that we will combine functionality into a single code base, which will be the Galaxy NG code base, um, and therefore uh, everything will be better. So some of the main advantages of that are that we'll have a single code base. Uh, so there'll just be one place that development's happening at the moment. The uh, community Galaxy doesn't really get much work done on it. There's little bugs that aren't getting fixed and there's bigger bits of functionality just aren't getting looked at. One of the main things is that there's no docs rendering on there. So we're having to build a uh, collection docs separately on the Ansible.com, on docs.ansible.com. So that's fine for the nine or so, so for the nine or so collections that are included in the Ansible package, but for everything else, they have to do something their own. I know some projects, some collections are using like read the docs or GitHub pages or something else. So that's one of the main advantages we'll get. Um, you know, so we'll have all those docs generated automatically. We will add support for role documentation as well. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more work around improving the user interface, particularly around searchability and discoverability of content. Um, and the uh, scaling issues that we've seen uh, hopefully a lot better but they were particularly bad towards the beginning of this year um if you were ever pulling collections in via 
and CIO you know, your CIO training a lot, um, so it'll have a lot better um, CDN protection in front of that and other changes. So that's sort of the, the overview of what we're doing. How we're, we're doing this is we're trying to trying to use data, we're trying to get feedback from the wider community, because there's a lot of functionality that's in community galaxy that isn't in galaxy ng and to set context we can't we won't we can't and won't be able to add that all there's just too much stuff there and also maybe some of it we just don't uh don't care about so what we've, we said we're going to do is we sort of define a problem statement i've given you a brief summary of that and there's a lot more detail in the link i've just put in uh in chat um and we've got the initial sort of user cases in there that we've broken down to so I think it's eight sections. So web user interface, content discoverability, um, uh, author discoverability, actions, authentications, and various admin and uh, command line interface. Uh, I have the Ansible Galaxy command as well. So we've got all those defined, and now we've got a survey. Is, did Greg drop off? Did he join back? This is no, I should be here. I should be here. Ah, cool. Okay. Um, Greg, I don't know if you could got a survey link you could drop into chat so people could have a. Um, I guess which one shall we use? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> probably the AH one, which we've been using for GitHub and IRC. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me check I'm on the right server. I have many of them open. Uh, yeah, so I'll put a survey link so you can have a look at this. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty short, so you know, I, I, I do welcome you to take the. The time to go and fill it in. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get that. Thank you. Um, go through those survey results. Um, listen to the feedback and then try and work out what the prioritised set of features are that we want um, to add in. And then we'll. Is... Yeah, great. So do you want to talk a bit no, about no, no, no. How, how we sort of design design a survey and what we're hoping to see there? The survey isn't very complex now. Actually, originally it was going to be. Uh... So, so the concern from the Galaxy team was that they were going to be asking too many questions about features, and I convinced them that that was not a problem. Um, so originally they wanted to be like, here's a bunch of bundles, tell us which bundle you like best. And I'm like, you've only got a few features. Like, I think they ended up with something like 11 questions. Um, you know, Answering 11 questions on a scale of 1 to 5, even if you really sit and think about how much each of that feature, how much that feature means to you in each case, um, it it's not going to take very long, right? It's a couple of minutes. Um, and so I was just like, just ask the questions. It's going to make the analysis so much easier. Um, so, so that's what they've done in the end, rather than trying to, to look at, at a bundle-based approach. Um, because then, you know, if one bundle wins, it's easy. But as soon as two of them get close to the same score, the next question will be, well, can we work out which features were actually important to people? And you've got to back engineer it. And it's horrible. Um, so yeah, it's a very simple survey. Just rate what features look interesting to you. The only thing I can see being a, a, a potential problem is like there's no real way to account for where pairs or larger amounts of features have to be there together, right? Like this thing doesn't make sense without that thing. And there's, it's not easy to account for that. Um, but there's things I can do post hoc um, in that line with the analysis anyway. So um, go ahead, just give it your best best ratings, uh, what, what matters, what doesn't matter. Uh, and then I will be doing probably some kind of blog post or something on the analysis of that later. I think I already filled it out a couple of days ago. Is it still like the same one or was the data, data cleared at some point? No, no it's the same. it hasn't been changed since it was finalized a couple of weeks ago. It's but, possible um, that you use the different. So we we have different links, uh, or rather, Survey Monkey supports. I think Toy Bear that you talk about. It's uh, so Survey Monkey has the concept of collectors, so you can have as many of these as you like. And it, at its simplest, it's just different links for different places, and it's the same survey it goes to the same place, but it, it it's like just an extra column in in the spreadsheet, if you will, the responses that says where did they fill it out from? Because I can give those collectors names, right? So I can say here's a link for the doc site, here's a link for IRC, here's a link for the bullhorn. And we just get an idea of where the audience is then. Um, it's it's still anonymous beyond that. It's, it's four links, not one link for each of you, right? But um 
Right. It just gives an idea of where the message is landing and, and who who is uh, who who is participating. Can you put that in context? When we did the doc survey at the start of the year, uh, we got over nine hundred responses to that. There were I think four or five links that were sent out. Eight hundred of them came from the doc website. Unsurprising, but nice to know that it's working. Right, and those banners actually have an effect. So that's all it is. It's just understanding where the message is landing. For question number nine. I think you're referring to the docs that are maintained on docsansible.com, not the readme. I'll have to open up the survey and look for myself. I mean, to be fair, I, I have the same problem that I always have with these surveys is that I generally have no idea what I'm talking about, and I'm relying on people reviewing the survey before it goes out there uh, to tell me that it's fine. Uh, so if there's a problem with it, we have to go and have a go at Nets, basically. Because uh, yeah, okay. So yeah. for, for um, me, it would be awesome to have the README or whatnot parsed there. Yeah, it's it's perfectly fine. But I don't need uh, to have every role in docsansible.com and also not linked it into the Galaxy. So, so it can be essential or. I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, we need Nitz to clarify, or maybe Gondola can clarify that. I don't know whether he's got enough context. Yeah, so I don't think you'd, you wouldn't click on the docs link and get the module docs or plugin yeah, docs yeah. for every whatever. Exactly. Like yeah, exactly. Or 20, it's also something I don't need. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I think you I... go into individual collections and then, and then see them. Yep, if you exactly. want to suggest an alternative wording that improves it, I can change question wording without affecting existing answers. So um, if we need to improve that question, I can do that right now. Yeah, my repository docs, for example, is, is maybe a more proper naming so here. So it's a question uh, if it's in this direction. How, so it's, yeah, so it currently or, says... Or, or docs would, from ansible.com in the Galaxy Web UI. Okay, how would you rate being able to see roll docs? So it's the roll docs bit that needs clarifying, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Gundala, what, what do you think? Roll docs? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the top of this, just to, so questions three through uh, 14 are all under the, we're now going to list some features that exist in the current version of Galaxy today. Mm. Um, and then we're asking, and then the rating is about how important, sorry, how much you make use of that functionality, if at all, today. Yeah. Mm. So if we bear that in mind and then go back to nine. So this is saying Ansible Galaxy. So galaxy.ansible.com today has some functionality to see your old documentation. How important mm -hmm. is that to you? So it's not right. talking about new functionality. It's talking about the existing functionality that appears in galaxy.ansible.com. Okay. Uh, I realize that's a bit difficult because as you scroll down the page, you lose the, the heading in the context. Yeah. Of the way well, how about if I add in, um, how would you rate being able to see roll docs as uh, as they are in the Galaxy Web UI today or something? Yeah, yeah. As they exactly. are. Yeah. How the, to, uh, able to see the roll docs as they are displayed in the Galaxy Web UI today? Mm hmm. Perfectly Done. fine. Awesome. There you go. Thank you for the feedback. I do always recommend to the people who ask me to build them a survey to go test it on some actual community members before they make it live, and they never do. <laughs> so uh, so that, that feedback is really useful. Oh, God, lots of talk away. He's come back. I mean, just to talk about um, why it's done this way, is the, 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 the point that Nitz is, was making is that it's not really feasible to copy every single piece of functionality from the old Galaxy to the old. It's not the same code base. It's not a trivial port. Um, so they want to know where, where it's worth prioritizing the effort, essentially. Um, and that's so if you just rate five for everything, you might as well not fill the survey out. It's not helping. <laughs> um, I mean, you might differentiate in some ways. Um, but yeah, it's largely about trying to figure out where to prioritize development effort. So. So has anyone got any other thoughts around this? Is there anything you think we've got missing from there? Does anyone think this is the wrong idea? I guess would be one of the main things and think we should keep two separate code bases and the existing user interface. And unfortunately, I don't think we have anyone from the Galaxy team online at the moment. From an end user point of view, things should just sort of work the same way you'll still do. 
Ansible collection install or Ansible Galaxy Roll install. Uh, something. Simon, could you expand on that, please? Feel free to mute. Uh, at least from my point of view, I think that the, the big concern regarding uh, roles is about keeping the ones that are already there working. So if someone is using Galaxy install a role, they will not break, right? Uh, but other than this, I do not think it does make a lot of sense to spend uh, development time into implementing all the features, like even listing documentation and, and other stuff. So I would, I would say that it's more important to consolidate and upgrade uh, Galaxy to use the same code uh, than doing other stuff related to, to roles. Uh, because the big concern of, uh, of the current users was more about, okay, what if the new version of Galaxy, right, is breaking my CI pipelines, for example, right? Or ability to install the stuff that worked before. Okay, I, I totally agree with this, and this is what we should set as uh, the minimum viable right solution for it. But uh, other features are not so important because if someone is uh, wants to share content with with Ansible today and create something new, there is no reason why they would create a role and not a collection. And uh, it may seem a little bit weird, but this could be a way, you know, to push people to move towards collections slowly without breaking old roles, right? So it's like, yes, you lose the ability to some of the stuff that we had on, on the old Galaxy. Okay, as long, it's like a downgrade of the service, right? The, the way I see it in the future. Because other than this, I, I, I'm concerned that it may take like a very long period of time to implement everything that we had on the old one and delay, make it even harder, right? Because the, the new version of, of, uh, of Galaxy is evolving. And if we delay too much the time when yeah, so the switch is like, there is more effort, right? Because more differences. Yeah, to, to set context, this this wouldn't be complete, and this is a twelve to eighteen month project. We think um, there'd hopefully be something usable in between, but it wouldn't necessarily have everything that people need. So, yes, you you make a, a really good point that we need to try and balance the getting people onto the new system, not breaking existing roles. You know, if an Ansible Ansible Galaxy role and store command works today, that needs to continue working. Um, at some point, we will probably stop adding new roles into Community Galaxy. We might allow new collections to be added for much longer. Uh, but yeah, we need to encourage people to the new system, but in a way that isn't just, no, go away, you're not doing it that way, because that generally tell you it would save people rather than motivate them to move to the new thing. So yeah, there's a there's a bit of balance there. Um, once once more work starts, you know, once work starts on this and then this, I hope that we'll have um I don't know quite how it look if it'll be like a, a a nightly snapshot of of community galaxy into into the new code base or a test version where people can put stuff in but they know that it might get wiped once a week or something like that. Um, but it, it's something that I really want to see is a good, good staging environment where people can play around and hook it into their CI and test and stuff to see how things are working. Uh, yeah, and to follow up on Brian's really good point, um, you know, it, it shouldn't just be about feature parity. We should be putting some new shiny stuff in there. I think docs generation is probably the big biggest one that I can think of. But if it's other ones, then uh, um, let us know. No free licks, it won't be support for Ansible 2.7 and 
before. Thank you very much. I'm just, the main point is that some people still, I mean, will create new roles now instead of collections because they want to target all the Ansible versions, which do not support collections. And for them, switching to collections is not an option because they are not supported by older versions. But besides that, I guess it's better if everyone starts with collections. Yeah, and you know, to sort of loop back to some of the stuff we were talking about earlier, we were talking about um, uh, instruct training scenarios for for making collections and for the for the tooling. So the Ansible Galaxy collection init tooling to generate the skeleton. We we try to have a bit of a plan with this stuff, right? And link these different bits together to try and make the transition easier for people. Soren asks if we could keep the old version up and known use as a fallback. I, I think realistically the old version will probably stay up for, for quite a while. Um, it will sort of go into a sunset mode as in parts of it maybe can read only something like I said, maybe we'll uh, not allow new roles to be added or and then new collections and then maybe only allow updates to those and then at some point just sort of freeze it. Um, you know, and then longer, longer term we can go into things like just make it have a what they call them, downtime periods where you just, or, or we just run and pick some of the bugs that we had in there before. So at six and seven hundred UTC it falls open for people so they realize that they shouldn't be using it anymore. Um, so yeah, we are sort of thinking about that, but it's yeah, we, we want it to be available for a while, but still to encourage people to move to new site. Uh, so we had a longer break just now, uh, thinking this would be a shorter topic. Yeah. But now <laughs> we're at, um, 10 minutes into the docs uh, session. So um, if it's OK to wrap up this one so we can move forward and we can yeah. also in discussion. So, on yeah, so yeah, no, thank, thank you for being a uh, uh, carol clock, as always. Um, if you haven't done the, the survey, please do. It's literally 12 questions, right? Um, Give us feedback if you've got any more detailed feedback. So you know, if, if what we said has made you thought more about actually how can we minimise the amount of work and maximise the, the transition, or things we can do to make it easier to for people to move from standalone roles to collections. Um, you can either put comments on Reddit post or just a GitHub issue I'll put in the chat in a moment, um, or just ping or just discuss the thing nicely. But yeah, thanks. We can go over to the to now.